Others would milk the attention directed at their sister for every dollar and use it to court fame, not caring how their actions reflected on their sister. Samantha chose the second path. According to Meghan Markle, her half-sister Samantha quickly changed her last name as soon as news of Meghan's relationship with Prince Harry leaked. Samantha didn't stop at sharing the same last name with the Duchess. She gave press interviews left, right, and center, wrote a book calling her half-sister, now the Duchess of Sussex, pushy, and created a public spectacle of the Duchess when she sued Meghan for refusing to acknowledge their close relationship as siblings. For over a year, the world watched the lawsuit play out in court until the judge dismissed it, only for Samantha to file another suit weeks later. Here is everything you need to know about the lawsuit between Meghan Markle and her half-sister, Samantha Markle. In 2018, the whole world witnessed a real-life Cinderella story when the King of the United Kingdom, who was the Prince of Wales at the time, walked Meghan Markle down the aisle where a beaming Prince Harry waited to make her a princess. Only this time, Cinderella wasn't an orphaned teenager with a cruel stepmother, although she had a wicked half-sister. Rather, she was a millionaire actress who empowered women and helped them learn how to use their voices her life's mission. Her cause had taken her all over the world and had her giving speeches in front of dignitaries from all over the world at United Nations Summit long before she met Prince Harry. Meghan's journey to that defining moment in 2018 started in Los Angeles, where she was born to Doria and Thomas Markle. In an interview with Elle, Meghan revealed that she was two years old when her parents divorced, but several outlets have claimed that she was four years older when Doria left her and Thomas's home in the valley and moved to an apartment in LA with Meghan. For the entire length of Doria's marriage to Thomas, Meghan's half-siblings, Samantha and Thomas Jr., lived with the family. This fact will become important later. After her parents' divorce, Meghan split her time between Doria's apartment and her father's house until she turned 18. Growing up, Meghan was the model, confident daughter who wasn't afraid to use her voice to champion women's causes. When she was in the sixth grade, she saw a sexist commercial and wrote a letter to Hillary Clinton, the then First Lady of the United States, asking for help to bring it down. She single-handedly ran a campaign against the advert and had the company change the offensive insinuation in the commercial. After learning that her voice could change the world, Megan committed to using it to bring more positive change. She's since used her education, acting career, and fame to amplify women's issues on powerful platforms such as the United Nations and the media. Meghan Markle did not fit the profile of a woman who had previously married into the royal family. She's a mixed-race, divorced American, and an actress. To British conservatives and monarchy purists, she compared poorly to other women in the royal family, particularly Kate Middleton, the English rose who had all the qualities purists seek in a princess and queen. However, when the news of Meghan's relationship and later engagement to Prince Harry leaked, she received overwhelming support from all over the world, overcoming the skepticism that surrounded the thought of a black woman marrying into the British royal family. Opinion polls conducted across the UK in the months leading up to the wedding showed that the public embraced Meghan and Harry as the face of a modern monarchy. After the wedding, a gradual shift in how Meghan was perceived in relation to her new family started. It began with a few negative opinion pieces in the media. But before long, the headlines of most British tabloids were running pieces with unsubstantiated claims about her attitude and behavior. It didn't take long for the British public to shift their opinion on the Duchess. The once beloved woman, who was hailed as the future of the monarchy, became the object of unwarranted hate and harassment from the same people who had lined the streets of London to catch a glimpse of her on the magical day when she married her prince. With the support of the public, the tabloids have continued their smear campaign of Meghan, even after she and Harry resigned from their duties as working royals and settled down in California with their children. While Meghan was fielding attacks from the British tabloids, her half-sister was adding more wood to the fire and pouring lighter fluid all over it. Samantha started her own smear campaign against Meghan long before the wedding, when she rained public insults on the future Duchess after Meghan failed to invite her to the royal wedding of the decade. Samantha apologized later, but pulled a public stunt by flying to the UK seeking an audience with Meghan. After the wedding, Samantha became the go-to person for tabloids who needed sound bites and quotes for their anti-Megan articles. 
In 2021, Samantha published a memoir entitled The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister. The release of the memoir coincided with the tabloid's use of words such as narcissistic, manipulative, and difficult to describe Megan. In the book, Samantha alleged that Megan had been a demanding person throughout her childhood, adding that she belittled their father's contribution to her education. Samantha talked about Megan's first wedding, which she hadn't attended, and revealed that the two sisters had lost contact and hadn't talked in nearly three years before the royal wedding. Naturally, the tabloids picked Samantha's revelations apart and used them to attack Megan further. Eventually, the constant attacks from the media and some internal disagreements with the royal family drove Harry and Megan away. Harry and Meghan's exit from the royal family, which was infamously dubbed Megxit, was the hot topic of 2021. Everyone who knew of the couple's departure was itching to find out why they stepped down from their royal duties. Initially, Meghan and Harry refrained from talking about their decision, but tabloids and social media users' speculations ran too wild that the couple had to share their reasons for leaving Harry's family with the public. The couple sat down with Oprah Winfrey in March 2021 in an interview that attracted over 50 million viewers. In the interview, Megan spoke about her family, including her step-siblings, inadvertently getting Samantha fodder for a lawsuit against Megan. One year after the interview, Samantha filed a defamation suit against Megan, claiming that Megan had shared some injurious falsehoods in her interview with Oprah by saying that she was an only child. Samantha's second claim was that Megan had misrepresented their relationship by referring to her as a virtual stranger with whom she had no relationship whatsoever. To anyone who had watched the interview, Samantha's claims and basis for the lawsuit were flimsy at best, since Megan hadn't claimed to be an only child, but that she grew up as one. Besides, Samantha had confirmed Megan's statement that they were practically strangers herself in prior interviews when she revealed that the two hadn't spoken in years. The irony of Samantha suing Megan for defamation was not lost on anyone who had heard her in interviews about Megan, during which Samantha had made more profoundly defamatory comments about Megan, such as when she called Megan a social climber. The third claim in Samantha's lawsuit was drawn in a chapter of a book about Megan, Finding Freedom, entitled A Problem Like Samantha. However, as the judge pointed out, Megan didn't write the book and couldn't be held accountable for defamatory statements in a book she didn't publish. With all her claims deconstructed, Samantha's defamation suit was thrown out in March 2023. Barely two weeks after her first case against Megan was dismissed, Samantha was back in court to add new claims to her defamation suit. This time, she built on her previous claims, drawn exclusively from Harry and Meghan's tell-all documentary that premiered on Netflix late the previous year. In the documentary, the couple called out the British press for harassment, the royal family for unconscious biases and racism, and part of Meghan's family for spreading lies about her. One of the featured speakers was Samantha's daughter, Ashley, who revealed that she'd cut ties with her mother, who acted out on her resentment and anger towards Meghan. As soon as the documentary aired, Samantha was back on the tabloids proving Ashley right by claiming that Megan was using the platform to peddle fake news. Samantha claimed that Megan was lying about her relationship with the late Queen Elizabeth II and using the deceased monarch for publicity. Samantha followed up her critique of the documentary with a second lawsuit, alleging that her half-sister told malicious and damaging lies about her, claiming injury and harm to her reputation as a result. In the court documents, Samantha highlights the statements of one of the people who spoke in the documentary, who claimed that Samantha was one of the people who were spreading disinformation about Megan online. She alleges that Megan paid the person who made the statement to malign Samantha. The man denies having any motive to malign Samantha. It's now up to the court to decide whether Samantha's new claims are as baseless as the previous ones or whether she is owed the $75,000 she is demanding from Megan and damages for her stained reputation. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.